Logging into 10 different apps at work and typing your password each time is annoying enough. But from a security perspective, it's also risky. More passwords mean more chances to be stolen, reused or fished. And that's where single sign-on or SSO comes in. You log in once and you can access everything you are allowed to, whether that's email, HR systems or cloud dashboards. But modern SSO isn't just OAuth. There is also SAML, OpenID Connect and SCIM, each solving a different piece of the puzzle. Let's break down how they work, why companies use them together and the security trade-offs you should know. Let's get started. Before SSO, each app had its own login system, database, and password rules. That meant more passwords for users to remember, higher support cost for password resets, and more risk if one app's login system got compromised. SSO centralizes authentication. You log into a trusted identity provider once, and all other apps, called service providers, trust that login. The result, one set of credentials, consistent security policies, and a single place to enforce MFA, session timeouts, or device checks. The catch? SSO isn't one single technology. There are different protocols for different needs. And that's where SAML, OIDC, and SCIM come in. Let's start with SAML, Security Assertion Markup Language. I have actually made a dedicated deep dive video on SAML that walks through the XML structure, assertions, and security considerations in detail. I'll link it in the description if you want the full breakdown. At a high level, SAML is one of the oldest and most widely used SSO protocols, especially in enterprise apps like Salesforce, Workday, or ServiceNow. Here is the flow. A user tries to access an app, the service provider, or SP. The app says, I don't handle logins. Go talk to the identity provider, IDP, like Okta, Azure AD, or Ping Identity. The IDP authenticates the user, maybe username or password, plus MFA. Once authenticated, the IDP sends a SAML assertion, an XML document, back to the service provider. This assertion says this user is who they claim to be and can include attributes like roles or group memberships. The SP verifies the IDP signature and grants access. SAML is XML based, verbose but very flexible, and it's still the workhorse for web-based enterprise SSO. But it's not optimized for mobile apps or modern APIs which is where OpenID Connect comes in. If SAML is the veteran of enterprise web SSO, OIDC is the modern API-friendly option. OIDC is actually built on top of OAuth 2.0, which I have covered in detail in another video, including flows like authorization code and Pixie. OAuth itself handles authorization, letting an app act on your behalf, but it doesn't define how to prove who the user is. OIDC adds that missing identity layer, it uses OAuth's token flow, but in addition to access tokens, it returns an ID token, a JSON web token or JWT, that contains the user's identity information signed by the identity provider. The result is the same basic SSO experience as SAML. Log in once with your IDP, get redirected back to the app with proof of your identity, but OIDC is JSON-based, lightweight, and works seamlessly for mobile apps, single-page applications, and APIs. So in short, SAML is XML-based, older, and with enterprise web focus. OIDC is JSON, it's modern and API mobile friendly. Finally, let's talk about SCIM or SCIM, the system for cross-domain identity management. I also have a full video on SCIM where we go deep into its schema, endpoints, and real-world implementation. So I'll just cover the high-level role here. SAML and OIDC handle authentication providing who you are and passing that identity to apps. Skim is about provisioning and deprovisioning, automatically creating, updating, or removing user accounts in those apps based on data in your identity provider. For example, when a new employee joins, your IDP, say Okta or Azure AD, can use Skim to automatically create their Slack, Zoom, and Jira accounts with the right roles. And when they leave the company, Skim can remove or disable those accounts instantly, closing any lingering access. In other words, Skim is the identity lifecycle plumbing that keeps your SSO setup in sync with reality. SAML, OIDC, and Skim aren't competing technologies. They solve different problems inside the SSO ecosystem. 
And here is the high level picture. SAML or OIDC handle the authentication handshake between the identity provider and each service provider. The IDP proves the user's identity and sends the necessary claims. SEIM or SCIM handles account lifecycle management, making sure the apps have the right user accounts with the right roles and that unused accounts get removed. For example, a new engineer joins your company, they log into the IDP once in the morning, maybe via OIDC for modern apps or SAML for legacy enterprise tools. SCIM has already created their accounts in GitHub, Slack, and Jira overnight with the correct team permissions. And if they leave, SCIM removes their access everywhere in minutes, while SAML OIDC simply stop authenticating them. When combined, you get a secure, centralized logging plus automated account management, reducing both friction for users and attack surface for the company. So here is the takeaway. SAML is the enterprise workhorse. XML-based, great for web apps, but less ideal for mobile. OIDC is the modern API-friendly option, but on top of OAuth 2.0. Scheme handles the account lifecycle, creating, updating, and removing user accounts automatically. They are not rivals. They are puzzle pieces in the bigger SSO picture. SAML or OIDC handles authentication, Skim keeps account data in sync, and your identity provider becomes the single secure point of login for everything you use. By the way, SSO is just one part of a broader discipline called IAM, Identity and Access Management. IAM covers everything from authentication to authorization and include tools like MFA, role-based access control, and privileged access management. SSO simplifies login, but IAM is the full framework that makes sure the right people get the right access to the right resources, and nothing more. I've covered IAM in detail in another video, so check that out if you want to see where SSO fits in the bigger picture. SSO is one of those topics that's simple to explain to a user. Log in once and you're done. But there's a lot of engineering and protocol design happening under the hood to make that possible. If this helped you understand the bigger SSO ecosystem, hit like, subscribe, and share it with your teammates. And if there is another identity or authentication topic you want me to cover, maybe Kerberos, FIDO2, or passwordless login, drop it in the comments. I read every single one.